Hello everyone and welcome to this new episode of the series of podcasts by the French Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. We discuss the resilience of business entities in Ukraine in the face of the Russian full-scale invasion and the perspective for recovery and reconstruction. I'm joined today by Kirillo Pesenkov. Hello Kirillo. Hello. Kirillo, you are the general manager of Saint-Gobain Construction Products Ukraine. Of course, we know some general features of Saint-Gobain, a French company that was established in the 17th century by Colbert to manufacture mirrors primarily. The company then expanded and also diversified. So my first question would be, what exactly is Saint-Gobain Construction Products here in Ukraine? Well, we are representing Sangoban in Ukraine since 1997, and uh, our core business up to now was construction materials, such as uh, insulation materials, uh, plaster boards, and uh, construction mixes. So that's uh, th- these three is our core business. And of course, uh, Sangoban Glass is one of the most important businesses for our group. Uh, which has been introduced uh, in Ukraine since a very early stage, and uh, it takes a decent market share uh, in advanced applications here in Ukraine. However, Sengoban is present in Ukraine with many more applications, such as Sekurit, uh, uh, which is automotive glass, or PAM, which is uh, cast iron pipes used for infrastructure and buildings. Those brands are also present in Ukraine and they uh, bring a huge value for Ukrainian customers. However, within our core scope, the construction materials uh, take the, the, the major role. It's a remarkable uh, long-standing presence in Ukraine. And as we know the history of the past decades, the country has known its uh, ups and downs. But the most dramatic shock was the Russian full-scale invasion on 24th of February 2022. So how did you adapt to this major challenge? Well, it's a very good question because uh, Sangoban has been found uh, uh, in 1665. So the first crisis we passed through was uh, French Revolution and we survived. And uh, afterwards, two world wars and uh, many other turbulences. So... Sangoban is uh, quite a resilient firm with its culture fighting the different crises. And uh, we in Ukraine, we inherited part of these genes to, to be resilient to the crisis. Well, what is what is striking for me is how Sangoban is demonstrating its commitment to the team. So since the beginning of the war, we had a specific service helping Sangoban people to deal with uh, issues are linked to the physical uh, movement from the dangerous areas to the safer areas of Ukraine or outside Ukraine. So uh, we, we've got our people accommodated everywhere, actually, from uh, Romania to Poland to Germany to Canada. In terms of business, I would say we have adapted quite rapidly to the new reality. So we restarted our commercial operations already in April 2022. Our supply chains uh, were disrupted, of course. However, it was uh, quite possible to reintroduce new supply chains already in May-June 2022 uh, with help of the group and uh, again with all commitment of the group. In terms of our business, the industry of construction materials suffered significantly. We experienced the change in the scope, of, in the volume of the business. Uh, the business uh, uh, decreased by approximately 50% since the beginning of the war. But also there is a significant uh, geographical move from the eastern, southern part of Ukraine towards west. So we are following with our construction materials the flows of people and flows of businesses who are building flats and uh, business premises in the west of Ukraine. And what about the demand in Ukraine for your products? Instinctively, I would assume that they are extremely valued on the Ukrainian market, especially in these circumstances, Uh, but it's, it's only my assumption. 
Uh, do you confirm or not? And please expand on that. Well, say it depends uh, significantly on the sub uh, segment of our business, because in some segments, a Ukrainian market is uh, in uh, over capacity in terms of production uh, plants. And in some segments, say glass, uh, we in Ukraine, we do not have any production facilities up, up until now. Generally, I would say the demand is in decrease and we observe the uh, customers becoming more fo focused towards low cost uh, part of our range. So we traditionally were supplier of value added products. We were trying to give our customers additional value from what we observe uh, since the beginning of the war and since the restart, uh, certain restart of business activity, we need to re-educate uh, market, uh, re-introduce uh, our value added products to become a company we want to be. It was never our goal to be a supplier of the basic uh, applications and uh, we do not feel comfortable uh, with that because of the because of the simple reason of our mission as a as a group uh, we want to make a world a better home and you cannot do better with basic materials you need to provide additional value to the customers so we see this as an opportunity to change the way Ukraine constructs its uh, houses and other buildings to move Ukraine from traditional brick and mortars uh, construction to more towards more sustainable ways of uh, building houses and uh, other buildings. This shift is the one trend we expect to be developed in Ukraine with uh, frame housing, with a modular housing, and uh, this does not necessarily mean temporary housing. This is a, a, a very important point that we do not consider light construction as a temporary accommodation. This could be something which provides people with uh, most possible comfort and most possible sustainable living available today. And when it comes to the construction of these uh, modular houses, do you position yourself as part of an emergency response or rather as a part of a long-term uh, urban planning or maybe both? Oh, both because uh, emergency response uh, is something we need to do as a, as a responsible business. And uh, these things we are doing, we are helping some organization to to uh to provide their activities i don't want to name uh, here but this is uh, orphanages places for the displaced people uh so this is something we, we we can do quickly and rapidly however our goal is to say change uh, the mind of the people we want to provide the uh, ukrainian customers with sustainable solutions which are comfortable which are cost efficient which are rapid to install, that's actually the worldwide trend. So this is something which was not very much uh, present in Ukraine up until now. And what I'm saying is that this war is a push for the people to change approach to the light construction. Uh, this is uh, something which, uh, and uh, one of the important points, millions of Ukrainians are abroad now, they live in the houses built uh, based on this light uh, construction model. They can feel what it's like to live in this type of housing. And they, we hope they would bring this experience back to Ukraine. Of course, we all hope so. But let me ask you, are we there yet? I mean, uh, do you see some steps in this uh, direction you mentioned? Well, we did some steps. It is a very complex uh, issue, which starts from the norms, which are not allowing uh, light construction of uh, multi-story buildings right now. Uh, this is uh, traditional approaches to the uh, construction by, by customers who want uh, brick and mortar houses. However, I must say there is a shift. Uh, we are part of the movements toward toward uh, promotion of this kind of construction. And uh, we observe the growth of the businesses uh, linked to this segment. 
for the moment, majority of these businesses is focused on export of the products towards West, to Europe. But in any case, uh, sooner or later, uh, this will be spread around the, around Ukraine. We see quite important projects uh, like uh, the project uh, supported by Olena Zelenska in Lviv, Unbroken Mothers, which is built based on this concept. And some of our products were helping them to achieve the needed properties of the building. And uh, this is very good example that the immediate needs of the people could be met based on this concept of the light construction. Now we understand that your ambition is part of a more global trend. How is your activity included in a more global movement? Maybe some partnerships with Ukrainian or international supports? As a part of the group, uh, we are getting all the support from the group. And uh, as a part of the community of French businesses here in Ukraine, we are uh, trying to self-organize ourselves, uh, developing the horizontal links with all the French businesses uh, present here in Ukraine. We started and um, discussing nice project with uh, some French companies who are also interested in helping Ukraine to be rebuilt. Of course, we would uh, like to enjoy the support of the of the business development agencies uh, of France, and it would be good uh, to have. Indeed, this is something that the um, Chamber of Commerce really calls upon uh, to have uh, more support from the French business community and also the French economic mission. Uh, it's actually quite troubling that somehow a decision has been made to support French businesses and investors that are not present in Ukraine, rather than the companies that are here for a long time. Uh, and, and, and this, despite their expertise and their network, somehow it, it is kind of problematic in the way that we think about the French implication in the reconstruction process. But let's finish this podcast talking about the future and talking about the perspectives for Saint-Gobain uh, construction products here in Ukraine. So from a general point of view, how do you see the future? Well, first of all, uh, we, we do feel and we do confirm the commitment of the group towards uh, Ukrainian customers and the Ukrainian market. So we feel this, our team is increasing. We are introducing new functions here and those new functions are linked to the development of the future. So we, we truly believe this market would grow. We truly believe we could bring a value to Ukrainian customers and we truly believe that our products are meeting their needs today and tomorrow. We are present quite in a solid way here in Ukraine with our core businesses, installation, gypsum and uh, mortars, but we want to be even more present with uh, our other businesses like uh, infrastructure related business recently uh, acquired by Sangoban or we want to introduce better presence in terms of solutions linked to the sewage canalization and uh, stuff like that. So uh, there is a huge potential of the market and there is a huge potential of Sangovan to meet the needs of this market. And with, uh, uh, with the concept of rebuilding better than it used to be, we think we could offer uh, the solutions which uh, are economically proven and solid and uh, very much efficient for communities, for individual customers and for the businesses. And we are sure looking forward to following these developments. All the best, Kirillo, and thank you for this uh, conversation. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks everyone for listening to this episode of the series of podcasts by the French Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. You were with Sébastien Gobert. Let's meet soon for our next conversation.